Well, here's an exciting demo right here. We have circular motion, and this one kilogram cylinder is going around in a horizontal plane with uniform circular motion. We're assuming that it's traveling with constant speed. I'm going to say that the distance from the center out to the, the cylinder is 0 0.25 meters. And I'm going to say that it takes two seconds to go around once. We call that the rotational period. The time it takes to go around once is called the period. All right, here's the circle. There's the cylinder going around in a horizontal circle. Remember, it has a mass of one kilogram. It takes two seconds to go around. That's the period. Again, that's an uppercase T for period, the time it takes to go around once. Radius is 0.25 meters, the distance from the center of the circle out to the cylinder. It's traveling around at constant speed, what we call uniform circular motion. Uniform meaning constant speed, but coupled with constant acceleration because it's continually turning. Constant speed with constant acceleration, centripetal acceleration, uniform circular motion. Here's your force diagram. This is from the side view. So there's the cylinder, the one kilogram cylinder. It's weight down, Fg for weight, force of gravity. Normal force up on the cylinder, and static friction is what's holding it so it doesn't slip off. And here is the center. As this thing's going around in a circle, there's the center of the circle. Centripetal force, which is provided by static friction, the centripetal force provided by static friction is always directed towards the center of the circle. That's what centripetal means. So to find the frequency, to find the frequency, that's the number of circles that it completes, revolutions that it completes per second. Frequency is the number of revolutions per second is just the reciprocal of the period. Period is the time it takes to go around once. Frequency is the, the number of revolutions per second. Very similar concepts. They are just reciprocal concepts. A, frequency, equals 1 over the period, which is 1 over 2. That's 0.5 hertz. B, the speed of the object is traveling at a constant speed. And so something going in a circle at constant speed, well, constant speed is just distance over time. And what's the distance an object travels in a circle? It's the circumference. Circumference, as you all know, is 2 pi r. The time it takes to go around once, because it's distance over time for speed, the time is the period. Period. So 2 times pi times 0.25, because that's the radius the distance from the center out to the cylinder, all over the two seconds it takes to go around once. And that equals 0 0.785 meters per second. Part C, the centripetal acceleration, sometimes referred to as the radial acceleration, the acceleration due to the fact that it's turning changing direction. Remember, it's accelerating at constant speed because its direction is changing. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Velocity is speed and direction. Its speed is staying the same, but its direction is continually changing. So A subscript C for centripetal is equal to V squared over R. That's 0.785 squared all over 0.25. And I hope I did this right. I came up with 2.47 meters per second squared. 2.47 meters per second squared. Next, we are looking for the friction. Well, how do you find the friction from this? The key to this is to remember that the friction is what, what provides the centripetal force. It's because of the friction that the object turns. If it weren't for the friction, it would just skid right off. So the friction 
is the centripetal force. So calculate the centripetal force. Remember that centripetal force is a net force, and Isaac Newton says that net force causes a mass to accelerate. So the centripetal net force causes the mass to have a centripetal acceleration. Well, that's going to be one kilogram, because that's the mass of the cylinder, times 2.47 meters per second squared, which equals 2.47 newtons. That's the centripetal force. What provides the centripetal force? In this situation, is provided by the static friction. So the static friction is 2.47 newtons. The last question, I want to know what the co what coefficient of static friction corresponds to this. The way this is normally asked, what's the minimum value of the coefficient of static friction? For all we know, the coefficient of static friction could be greater. But it has to at least be big enough to provide this amount of static friction. How do we know that? Because the cylinder didn't slide off. If the stat coefficient of static friction were lower, then this never would have stayed on the cylinder. So using this number, the equation for static friction is that it's um, less than or equal to mu times the normal force. So we're solving for mu. which is greater than or equal to the static friction all over the normal force. I'm just going to keep going to the right here. So that's greater than or equal to 2.47 divided by the normal force, which is equal to the weight in this case of 9.8 meters, uh, 9.8 newtons, because this is 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's 9.8 newtons. And, whoopsies. That came out to be 0.25. And remember that it has no units. It has no units. It's an indicator of the surface roughness. It is uh, at least 0.25. It might be greater than 0.25. That's what the greater than or equal to sign is. It's at least 0.25. Again, we know that because the cylinder did not skid off.